I choose you, Jackson, to open the show! Psyduck! It's... It has no effect. Psyduck! Welcome to Bored and Annoyed. I'm home at the movies. Psyduck! And that is Jackson saying he's Jackson. Also Psyduck. Psyduck. This week we're discussing, in honor of the Pokemon Detective Pikachu film, what video games deserve a movie. Not not just deserve a movie. We are pitching the movies that they deserve. I can't promise that this is going to be good. My pitches. <laughs> <laughs> They're not fleshed out. Well, we're going to sit here and we're going to try and... You know, say what works about each other's pitches and maybe what would improve them for from our standpoint. I, I typed this up this morning. Oh, boy. Uh, it didn't take me long. Um, I got stuck a little bit. Oh, wow. OK. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think I got something here. Do you hear that, people? That's the sound of work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, before that, though, news. We've got our news section. Do we have a lot of news this week? I feel like maybe I was out of the loop. or I, there, I, There's not a lot of news this week. That's also partially because we recorded so late last uh, yeah, week. Yeah, there you go. So the, like, the big news of the alternating Star Wars Avatar stuff we hit already. We are, yeah. Okay. So one of the bigger pieces of news uh, is that according to an actor... Always the most reliable source. Barristan Selmy, the guy yes. who played Barristan the Bold. Yes. Uh, that George R. R. Martin has actually finished the last two books of Game of Thrones. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe it? <laughs> Can you tell that I, <laughs> I don't believe it at all? Okay. Uh, well, and for, I think he shit on this today. Did I, he? I read a headline saying like, oh, it's not true. So I'm assuming George was like, no, that's not true. But like, why does the actor who knows who plays Barristan sell me? Like, he's right. the one who has the nugget of info. He and George hit it off, man. They They're go best skiing. Buds. They yeah. go skiing. Go every... to Jets games together. <laughs> yeah. You imagine? They, they don't write together. Could Nobody's you imagine writing. George skiing? No. I can imagine him like in the in the in the de- bowels of like a Viking <laughs> ship doing nothing but eating the food of everyone <laughs> fruits of everyone else's labor on the he's, ship. He's the anchor of the ship. He just yeah. doesn't know it. And he doesn't write while he's down there. No. No, he never writes. He's a writer who doesn't write. So I'll say, <laughs> what are you then? You're just a guy then. <laughs> he's, he came up with this great story. I don't know how he did it. But, but uh, I mean, I'll tell you something that uh, I've been thinking. George might be a secret genius. Okay. Because this season is being a little shit on. Yeah. A, a little. A little. A little. I mean partially by us from time yes, to time. Yeah, sure. Uh, and maybe he's smart in that when he releases it, it's like, well, better than what we got. Yeah, or maybe he like uses some of the criticisms, mm. although I hope he doesn't because it that wouldn't be like an organic telling of the story. But right. I mean, it's hard to imagine that you could be him and not have what the show's done to influence you a bit i can't imagine it's possible right. right unless he's one of those weird people who like they don't like to watch their creations there's you know? no way he hasn't watched this he's he, watched it he's, he's like involved so he's, yeah he seems like an egoist too so he he's you know he's gotta stroke that ego i mean he's probably gonna fucking die before the books come out yeah. and i know that makes him mad when people say that it's like well sorry you're not getting any younger george you don't look particularly healthy <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> He's big and beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, but uh, another piece of news, Game of Thrones related, tangentially, uh, the 2022 Star Wars film that's in production currently is actually being written, uh, according to Bob Iger, by the Game of Thrones D&D, showrunners. David and Dan? Yes, the showrunners. Yep. Um, I don't mind this. Right. 
uh, you know, uh, Star Wars isn't quite like I feel like the 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 ending of Game of Thrones where they like completely took over or almost completely took over like feels more Star Warsy than games of Game of Thronesy to me. That's a, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if they can direct and set up a fight like that mountain hound fight, like with like with Jedi and Sith or whatever. Apparently, right. it's the old Republic. Is the rumor? That's the rumor. Um, I mean, we could be we could be in for something really special. Um, I'm, I'm taper gonna, your expectations. Right, right. Yeah, let's 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 bring it back a little bit into the realm of the reality, realm. which which yeah, the realm protector of the realm. <laughs> um, the realm of expectations. Uh, no, I I don't think that just because they're brought on means it's going to be great. Because, I mean, I hope that they don't try and carry the Game of Thrones tone into Star Wars. Star Wars has its own tone. Um, and I feel like, I mean, you can play around with it a little bit. I think you should. Sure. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be Game of Thrones. I would agree. Um, but also, I mean... It's just kind of exciting because say what you will about this newest season, but they're still pretty talented writers and they've done a pretty good job up to this point. And if they're given a good enough direction to take a star and it's not like the show went to shit um, uh, because it just started out bad. You know, I think it's people I think in people's minds, it's shit. Because it started so amazingly. Yeah, but it's also you. I mean, you have to take into account that the whole first four seasons and even into season five, like wasn't their story. Right. You know what I mean? Like it did start to go to shit when the books started to go to shit and when there were no books to draw. Off of. Right. So. so that's kind of my point, though, is like it's not necessarily their fault because they're they're basically kind of picking up a baton and it's a doing tough the job and doing the best that they can with source material that no longer has anything right so yeah could be good yeah uh, i don't mind it yes. it's decent news it's better than ryan johnson yeah or is he directing rumor, this movie that the they're rumor writing is is i mean and it's just in the rumor mill but the rumor is is that he's actually off that trilogy <laughs> but, Gee. but they're not i mean they're not acknowledging they're it. not going to acknowledge yeah. that i don't expect that to be acknowledged until they have a replacement director that gets people excited they want to lead with good news. Ari Aster, he's moving away from horror. <laughs> <laughs> Send him Star Wars. I think it's time for trailer time. Trailer time. It's a trail time. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that's from? Uh, I feel like it sounds like a Wayne's World thing. But yeah. Yeah. Don't tell Although anybody. Although that was a little different. It was. Yeah. I also... Took it directly from Wayne's World, though. But don't oh, tell anybody. Oh, oh, you that's right. You used that. Yeah. I forgot about that. But yes. Okay. Uh, so trailers. Trailers. Uh, Which one do you want to talk about let's first? Let's just get Melis- Melis- Maleficent out of the way first since I heard it. I right. didn't see it. Uh, it. Yeah, I was watching it on my phone. <laughs> yep. When I, uh, when we, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't look great. Did the, you like the first one? I thought the first one was fine yeah it was okay i feel the same way uh angelina jolie is the best thing about it the visuals on this are actually pretty cool um she's got this great cool looking like uh skin tight thing with the wings and stuff she looks very demonic it's very demonic very almost metal in a way and i'm a little surprised that disney is putting out a picture like that does it look like uh uh what's her name from thor 3 Hella? Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a Hella vibe. But I mean it's kind of it's it's like torn away a little bit, so like there's some skin showing too. Okay. But it's it's like it's actually a great look. And the the art design looks great. The song choice for this is so it's awful. It's <laughs> for the trailer. For the trailer, it's like season it's like season of the witch. Yeah, they Halloween three. That's yeah. what they're going for. Yeah. Two more days till Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. Two more days till Halloween. Silver, Silver Shamrock. Shamrock. If that makes it into the movie, That'd be I'll, great. Be, I'll uh, A, instant A. It gets the best, the best picture, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it doesn't look great. It looks it looks like a pretty bad sequel, actually. Okay. Uh, but the art direction looks nice. So, Does it look better than uh, the Aladdin clip? No, 
we can insert that can into we trailer just talk time. about that right now please so it's the prince ali song it looks like it was made for 37 dollars on like a back lot at hollywood studio yeah it, it just looks like dog shit it looks really really terrible yes uh, astoundingly awful for i mean it's like and it's not just the size of it you know no it just looks the, fake to me it looks cheap well it looks fake it looks cheap but it's also the shot composition is not interesting the camera work is not interesting right. there's nothing dynamic about this scene at all it's like who like if this is what we're in store for i mean they thought that this was worth releasing they thought that people would see this and say i want to see that movie if this is what we're getting this is going to be a train wreck. I mean, judging from the comments on the IGN post, there were a lot of people that said that, though. That That's this what's looks shocking. Great. Yes. Really? Like, it looks awful. It does look terrible. It, I would agree. It looks like a movie shot on autopilot. It looks terrible. That yeah. had $14 for costume budget, so everybody's just got rhinestones it's and shit. It's embarrassing. It, it, yeah, like when they pan over to like Jasmine up in that little ooh, box or whatever, and it's like, ooh. you look like you're in a completely different place. Like, this doesn't look like natural, like you're there at all. Right. You it's, know? It's not. It's. I'm astounded at how bad this looks. It's. It's mind boggling. I can't wait to see how bad it is. You know, it'll be interesting. I mean, what if it's good? Well, that would be insane because I don't see that. At this point, you're like, yeah, I'm writing this movie off. I'm if this becomes anything less than or anything more than like a D minus, I'll be shocked. Uh, By the way, and I heard your conversation about this a little bit on um, on seen it which Alex was on this week. Yes, I was uh, you, on Seen It Cast. If you guys uh, want to listen to Spoiler Steve and I and uh, Kova. Kova. Uh, we talked about John Wick 2, and we talked about uh, the box office and Pokemon. Right. You guys can listen to that. So this came up, and I disagree that this is going to like lose money with Steve. I think Steve said that. Yeah. I, don't, I disagree I don't, with that. I don't think it's going to lose money. I don't think it's going to perform anywhere near what disney is hoping it's, it's going not to gonna make. make beauty and the beast money no it's no. i don't i don't see this reaching a billion no it's gonna do gangbusters in india though <laughs> well the movie's set in india isn't it yeah it looks like it it does oh it looks like they're trying to hit the bollywood um oh, demographic. it does it does it but really it, but, does but the thing is is you can go and watch a way better bollywood movie if you want I'm sure that there are tons. Can that, you? I'm Do sure we you know can. that? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there's a movie that we're going to watch eventually for this. I think it's Bahubali. I uh, think. Is that like the big action one? Yes. Yeah, we got to watch. It's that. one of the most crazy, amusing, silly things that you'll ever All see. Right, I'm watching. It's fucking nuts. But uh, yeah, so let's get off that fucking trailer. Oh, I was going to say what would be interesting we should take we, we should both place bets what's going to be worse this or sonic on the tomato meter yeah it can't be like our grades i suppose that's true because we're we, we could be biased and right just and i lie. feel like sonic's got that on lockdown but <laughs> <laughs> does it approach does it approach sonic that's the question no no you don't think it's going to approach I, it no I can't. Uh, you're you're probably right. I mean, I think Sonic's like a twelve. Do you, you know th- what I mean? Okay, let me ask you this. See how well you know me. Do you think I'm gonna be more mad at this because of the potential that this has? You're gonna be Sonic? more mad at this because you have an affinity for that film as that's your true. favorite Disney film, that's, if I remember correctly. That's, that's true. Yes, of the uh, Disney. I, I'm imagining Sonic is not your favorite video game. Of no, all it's time. not. It's not. No, and I was gonna say then we should probably just end the show. If that's your favorite video game of all time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But I'm yes. sorry to anybody who Sonic is their favorite. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for two decades the to get my sto- Sonic movie. The great sto- I can't wait for the tail spinoff. Oh, my God. And Knuckles. Look, all the potential. Uganda Knuckles. Um. But yeah, so uh, is that what? What else we got? Oh, we yeah. got we got trailers, the trailers, trailer so we're in trailers. So midsummer, yeah, it uh, they show a little more. Kind of yeah. the, it looks like more of a like they're getting ready for the big trip. It's kind of like a like a getaway college kid getaway feel at the beginning, right? Um, they get there, they show a little more fucked up shit in little bits. Yeah, not enough to really give too much away. No, um, 
But yeah, it still looks like um, a uh, uh, fucking crazy, you know, uh, Wicker Man type movie. It's uh, it's 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 amazing to be able to say this after one film, but it looks like an Ari Aster it, film. And it looks pretty fucking good. It yeah. looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it I'm looks excited. disturbing. I think it's in like a couple months. I think it's soon. Yeah, um, they've got they've got some actors that I, so the first Will time Will Poulter is in it. Yeah, w- yeah, so, yeah. Is Will Poulter is he the one from uh, 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 Transformers? No, he's the one who was going to play it, kind of like the oh, mean right. looking yes. guy. Okay, yep, yep. He was yep. in like the Maze Runner and shit. Yeah, so Will Poulter's in it. There's also the guy from uh, Transformers Four. Yep, he was also in. Um, uh, the one who got scolded because he was uh, yeah. over 18 trying to bang the, the 16 year old Juliet yeah. Claus might. <laughs> yeah. One of the worst scenes in film history. Um, but uh, the other thing is, is that uh, he was in a little little ditty of a film called Sing Street, which is fucking fantastic. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. It. I it changed the way I looked at him as an actor. I was like, oh, you actually have talent. I I, I don't know anything else he's in. Like the, I don't know. Anything those about are the him. two things I've seen him in. About um, to be three. Yeah. So excited for that. That looks great. It really does. It does. It looks good. Uh, then we got another horror film, The Lodge. This looks pretty fucking good too. Now you mentioned before we tuned uh, turned on here. You have a couple nitpicks with horror as a genre in general, or horror it's, trailers. Or... It's more so horror trailers okay. and horror marketing, which is I'm so tired of like the edgy sort of worn out text that's used yep, all the time. Sure, I'm tired of like the cut to black in the trailer and then doom, and then here's the thing that yep. you know the jump scares that are in in these trailers. Those things bother me. I like. I hate that the the T in this is upside down. Like, I get it. It's also. It's just so. It's so boring in stock. Like, please come up with different texts that's for these true. movies. You're probably right. But well, that's, all that, that aside, and points to Midsummer for that because yes, it's like it's like the it's like anti horror movie and yeah. dreamy and sunny and uh, yeah yeah. The logo is like this pretty little. The more we talk about this Ari Aster, the more I'm like, guys, a guys a fucking genius. He might know it, what he's doing. Yeah, right. he, he really might. Um, but uh, trailer itself looks great. I, you almost don't quite know what's what going on. What the fuck on. is going on? Yeah, like is is the so basically it looks like the premise is that like the mom must be dead and he's yes. got a girlfriend and he's taking that the his girlfriend and the two kids up to like a lodge yeah. to like bond, like a bonding trip. Like yeah. they're trying to get the kids to open up to the mom or whatever. Yep. For some reason he leaves. I got to go grocery shopping, you guys. And it looks like <laughs> nothing in the fridge. Fucked. Like something happens. It's, I don't know if it's a monster or if one of the ki- if the kids are after her. If she's, it's a sequel to Troll Two, and no, oh but there's God. nothing in the fridge. If that happens, that is amazing. It'd be the greatest thing in cinema history. I would agree. Uh, but you haven't watched it yet, and you still have my copy. The guy who directed this did Good Night, Mommy. Okay, which is good. You should yeah. watch it. It's good. I, yep. Uh, it's, it's a little slow, but once it gets going, and it's even slow, like like when I'm complaining about things being slow, typically there's a real fucking problem. But mm. this one, like it's gradually kind of getting, mm-hmm. and by the end, you're just like, what the fuck? It's one of those. Okay. Highly recommend cool. that to everyone. Uh, but, and yeah, watch it with subtitles. If you don't watch it with subtitles, you're an idiot and you can't read. <laughs> <laughs> uh last trailer <laughs> i'm just gonna let him call our audience idiots well i mean those that that actually applies to but um which is fine i've probably said just about the yeah, same thing well, right and they know that i'm just fucking around but yeah. or not yeah doesn't matter i'm i'm winking right now yeah this is it's, a, it's, it's th- great it's great for a podcast jackson yes uh but yeah, but the last thing we've got is uh, the trailer for the new HBO uh, Watchmen TV series. I'm Even, not into yeah. this at all. No, neither am I. And it's funny because when I heard that there were like Watchmen comics, even like side comic books. Yeah. I was like, well, that doesn't make much sense to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it just doesn't feel right to me. Right. Like, why didn't they just redo Watchmen as a good TV show? Yeah. 
Like a 10 episode fucking show. I mean, in all honesty, when they, when they were like, oh, we're going to get a Watchmen thing, I was like, okay, cool. We can get something a little closer to the comics. We can spend a little bit more right. time there. Um, you know, and we can get a little D Snyder. I, like, not that Snyder did a terrible job with the movie in right. any no, way. No, well, he just, it's an impossible task because that graphic novel is dense as fuck and he fit it into a three hour movie and it just doesn't. He, he also kind of. Snydered he, it up. He snydered it up a little bit. He did. Um, but now you give us this, and if you didn't know any better, you would not have guessed that this was based on a comic book. No, not at all. Um, and in that regard, I'm like, oh, throw it on Netflix with fucking Iron Fist. I'm not even sure I understand the context of the story from the trailer that's it's why it's post a, watchman i yes, think that's what yeah it's post watchman that's why it's a bad trailer is, is it, because you don't even know what's going on right well you, is, is it post snyder watchman or is it post alan moore watchman i mean that we don't know okay um it looks uh, more alan moore-ish to me which i guess would be a good thing but it does but i i feel like visually it looks it looks pretty boring visually. i would agree yeah I, I don't disagree with you i wasn't like stoked and i was excited for this show but i was way more excited when they got watchmen thinking that it was the the, the graphic yeah. novel turned yep. into a show but. so there's a part of me that says way to go hbo you ensured that people are leaving I mean, this is meant to capture the same Game of Thrones audience. I think that someone from Game of Thrones had something to do with this, didn't they? Maybe. I, I have thought no idea. they did. I could be wrong, but. But, but yeah, um, I mean, it just it doesn't look great. No, it, it, it doesn't. Just, it just doesn't look great. Um, and then there's a part of me that says if Westworld season two does not pick up. I mean, you know, I've got I've got HBO right now. I'm not impressed with their movie selection. I remember back in the day, it was like, <laughs> oh, sweet. Like. HBO, like you could watch like pretty damn near recent movies, but I'm running through this shit and I'm like, if I haven't seen it already, it's either shit. No, that's usually about it. It's 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 usually it's shit if I haven't seen it already. Right. Uh, by the way, no, it's not Game of Thrones. Uh, Damon Lindelof is doing it. He did the leftovers. Ah, there we go. You say that and now I completely see it. It's yeah. got a fucking cult in it. Oh, yeah, wait. you're right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so the leftovers was good though for a while. I wasn't thrilled with the ending, but that's what. It, yeah, that's what I heard. But uh, I'm done. We were done with trailer time. Okay. Uh, shit, we watched then. Shit, we watched. Right, why don't watched. you kick it off this week? Um, not because I care about you, but because I don't have the app up with my notes on what I watched. Okay. Well. <laughs> I've got my notes here. Okay. And I'll start with something that I have so little respect for that I didn't even bother to Google to see if I gave it the right title. Okay. Uh, I watched a documentary called uh, Searching for Slender Man. Oh, Jesus. Um, at least I think that's what it's called. It's the HBO documentary about Slender Man. Sure. It's about these two little girls. They uh, got tied up in like this thing called creepy pasta if you're old and you've never heard of creepy pasta it's this thing where people read things online and it's meant to creep you out okay um and they read it and they read about slender man and they're they killed and it happened in wisconsin okay they killed their friend yes or their, no sorry they tried to kill their right friend. they stabbed her right? they stabbed her like 22 times or some shit like that girl miraculously survives um and they go to jail um, sure. And that's basically the story. Um, and the way that they, they do it is it's it's way too, way, way, way too long. It's, it's uh, I'd say over two hours, like two hours and 10 minutes, something like that. Or at least if, if it's not that, it feels like that. Um, and it's a movie, it's a, it's a documentary that could be an hour and a half. You could actually really, if you wanted to, you could condense it down and just do it like for like one of those like true crime shows you know okay yep um just an episode hour-long episode you'd be fine right like yeah one of those like id network yeah yeah sure yeah, absolutely so uh the reason i don't like it is the production value is very low um they just every time that they're not using footage from like a video game that's about slender man or interviewing people uh they just use drone footage 
of the town that this happened in. Yeah, that's like a new thing with documentaries. Like it's uh, the Michael Jackson one did that a lot too. Like L.A. Like a lot of over the head shots of L.A. Yeah, yeah. It's very lazy. Um, also, they 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 discuss the Slender Man and they discuss like the meaning of Slender Man and all this shit. And you're like, it was something that was made up for a fucking Photoshop contest that took on a life of its own. Right. Don't fucking make it into this like oh, story about the. Oh, pot. that's how they try and yeah. run with it. Yeah, they're like, oh well, the Slender Man is is a tale. It's monolithic, as old as time, and uh, the Pied Piper who takes the children in the night is he's the so, Slender Man. So do they do they explain that it's like a new version of the Pied Piper? Or yeah, do they try yeah, to they're kind like of, they're drawing parallels to okay. it. But it's like this whole like we're gonna glorify it and mystify it, and it's like. That's the whole problem with why this happened. Okay. Why are we doing this? And then and then like they just they just kind of reiterate the same points. It's just very lazy. It's dragged out. Um and I dock this movie a shit ton of points and this is this was the moment where I was like, "Yeah, I'm done with this movie." One of the drone shots you can see the propellers. And I thought if that made it into your movie, you have a problem. You don't have enough respect for me as an audience. I've never seen that shit happen on planet Earth. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And like, those people are shooting wild animals, yes. not just the fucking scenery. I mean, Milwaukee's a beautiful place <laughs> or wherever the fuck this is. Isn't that like near Milwaukee? Like it's, Wa- 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 I don't know. or some I think crazy it's a little, shit? I think it's a little our, up north. Yeah. Our state with all of its like Native American names that... People from other states probably look at the city list and are like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I I can take that off the list. I would have probably watched that if I thought to. I, I just it's it's like a yeah, it's not horrendous, but it's like a D D plus kind of movie. It's really not great. Uh, So so for me, I uh, am getting prepped for Mr. John Wick this week. Ah, so I watched John Wick. I started or I almost started John Wick, too. But I got so wrapped up in listening to you and spoiler Steve, another plug for their show, uh, shit on it that. um, And by the way, they do not speak for Bored and Annoyed Corporation, LLC, all rights reserved. (laughs) Alex does not does not, you know. He he is, does not represent the views. All right, we, we the, might have to show. take a seen it point and uh, and combine <laughs> our two averages on this. Oh God, I ooh, that's a tough one because okay, because I gave this an eight. I gave John Wick two an eight point three. Yeah, no, I'm, no, and I didn't mind the score. Right, I was like, oh, oh, like okay, I can take that score. Right, but the the his six and the fact that Kova. Okay, Kova. Kova. I hope you're listening. You're getting called out. Yeah. Sat there and said nothing while it was shitting on it back and forth. Mm. You know, just kind of upset me. Lost my blood pressure. I was pretty annoyed. Pretty annoyed <laughs> with the conversation. Um, I wanted to jump in. I actually sent Spoiler Steve a note saying that he will no longer be allowed on our podcast. Oh, my God. And I will no longer go on his podcast. That's, uh, wow. What is this? The WWE? We got some beef? I'm like Vince McMahon. Don't fuck with me. Just throw down for the bill. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but no, uh, I do disagree. But go take a listen. Uh, maybe you'll agree with them. Um, so, but the first John Wick, I did watch in its entirety this yeah. weekend. It's so fucking awesome. It's a master class. It's really I good. Re- I really do think it's. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually think that that's hyperbole. I think the first one is fucking fantastic. It's pretty goddamn great. Um, I think the second one is just as good, though. See, that's where we disagree. Right. For different reasons. But, um, but we're here to review the first one, though. Sure. But no, I'm reviewing the package. Fuck okay. It. All right. Fuck All right. It. All right. The first one is better, like, as far as an emotional core is concerned. The second one depends on you to kind of carry that into it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the second one doesn't have that really at all. Right. The the emotional core in the second one is uh, it's God damn. This guy just wants to be done and he can't be done. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with that. But world building action. I mean, it, it's certainly, you know, you actually I thought of you and I wanted to jump in and bring up something you say that John Wick, too, I think very successfully does is it kind of expands on the lore. 
You know what I'm saying? It it adds it adds enough pieces without like losing completely what it is. So I think it's a very successful sequel. No, personally. I'll I'll have to go back and visit it because I actually have not visited it in in a while. But what I will do, which is bad because I just reviewed that movie on there based no, on my you, feelings. You from like, remembered it. I could tell. Like yeah, I, I had no. I, you know. I remember that movie very distinctly because sure. I was very excited for that movie. And you were disappointed. I was disappointed. You were disappointed. disappointed in a good movie. Yes. Which is that. Yes. That happens. Yep. yep. It's and still, sometimes it was still fine. that fucks your original rating yeah. of said movie. Right. Which is interesting. Right. Well, I, I, I actually saw it twice in theaters because um, at the time, like before the podcast even came out, Jackson kind of lambasted me on facebook about this <laughs> and uh and so i was like well I remember. I, you know i was like well i gotta check this out i gotta see maybe i maybe i was wrong and so i saw it a second time and i was like um i'm not disappointed because i know what i'm sure, getting, getting right. into now but my problems that i see i'm more solidified in the problems that the i problems. saw um i i mean i a hundred percent agree with you on the emotional core killing the dog the wife dying all that stuff there's a lot more like understandable like you know uh you can feel more empathy as far as right. his motivation is concerned and everything you're you're definitely more in it right in the first one yeah um, it's 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 an emotional engaging time in the first one in the second one you're kind of along for an action romp ride with not much emotion attached to it in fact i'd say almost no emotion attached i would agree i mean i i yeah i can't disagree i i still think it's fucking amazing though. and and i know that you like the world building i was not the happiest with the world building because okay. i thought that i mean outside of like okay here's like a family and here's sort of like assassin families i'm like okay well that's that's fine it's not particularly interesting and then like the idea of the coins i'm like well that's fine that's also not particularly interesting i think the best thing about the movie the best thing that it introduces but it's also not it's not expanded enough for me to find it interesting is is Lawrence Fishburne's character and that the thing crew. That, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting idea. There's all it's 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 barely touched on. Well, and you find out that like there's other continental hotels and there's yes. like uh the whole thing where they like called of to, you know, put the bounty out on him and you see there's like this underground room and society that's yeah. like putting all this together. I did uh, kind of like that. Shot. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. One thing that Steve said that I completely don't understand is like the ending when everybody kind of freezes. Yeah. And like the whole point is that like those people were called there. That's that doesn't mean that everyone in the city is right. You know what I'm I saying? Agree with that. I, I kind of let Steve just sort of say it because, you know, like to explain it and deal I mean, with the whole thing you know well and you can't help but think it for a second where you're like wait a minute that's but, a lot but of it's people like, but, but it's, it's also the whole it's point a fantasy of like, movie basically but, but like, also it's the whole point of like they're all assassins they're called there because john wick is a has a massive bounty on his head right well and we don't even know they're all assassins right we i least, mean we just know that they're they're involved they're at least, in this society they're, they're or at least whatever. in on it yes, yes correct and i said at the time and i still Still a little disappointed because it's just what I would have done. And I think it could sure. have been amazing. But I love the idea of it's the Warriors, but it's just John Wick making his way through the city, going to different boroughs, getting attacked by different gangs. So you can do like really cool, interesting things with each gang of like assassins or sure. each group of it. assassins. Yep. Uh um, and the fact that like that's what the last 15, 20 minutes is, is him kind of, of making the second one. Yes. Yeah favorite part of the movie by far is, is the that, ending is the ending well yeah it was a good setup for a third one for Absolutely. sure undeniably good setup that's for when the, the movie one. kicked off for right. me and, and it's because it's the fact and i've said it before and jackson doesn't fully agree with me on this but my whole point is that jack uh, uh, uh john wick has been had the plot dictated to him for the whole movie okay. which is not to me particularly interesting the reason i like the first one so much is he's a man who who really is making choices throughout the entire of yeah it. that's true he's yeah he chooses to go after the people in the first one in the second one he doesn't really have a choice i agree with that the main point that we stick on is the suicide scene right uh where basically john wick goes to kill this guy's sister because that's his way out basically he right kill, he's going to kill the sister and then kill the guy yeah um he shows up and she kills herself before he can make the choice to kill her yeah is your argument my argument is he's already made the choice to kill her right that, that that's I, what I think. I, I could be wrong. That but. was a scene, and and I'll probably have to see it again to see how I think about it now. But the we uh, the way I realized it was or saw it was John Wick showed up, 
with the intent of killing her. Then he had some, she had some new information for him that she might have potentially changed his mind on that. But before he was able to make a decision, she took the decision out of his hands. So maybe some, she just killed herself because she thought someone else would kill her either right. way. Yes. And in that, that regard, could be true. And, and I thought that that would have been a really interesting character moment is that given the new information, what does John do? Does John have morals about killing somebody that's like completely innocent now that he's been out of the, the game for so long? You know, what has changed in John Wick since since getting out um, and the fact that they didn't use that moment to like do something interesting with the character was a little disappointing okay. to me. And I, I think mean, it, and I think it hurts the momentum of the film, even though the action makes up for I it for the it, most part. I thought it was a pretty interesting scene, though. Like, even if, you know, if she's even getting him out of the situation, the fact that she's like, all right, well, fuck it. I'll just do it. You won't have to worry about it. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun. That I was guess, a good but. part for her. I liked that okay. character bit. But you don't her. think it helps him. I don't His think character. it helps him. At, and I feel like you should do things in your movie if you have. I mean, because those movies are kind of thin on character. You've got John Wick and then there's everybody else. Sure. Um, so purposefully so purposefully so. So you really should do the things that service your main character if you can. All right. Oh, well, John Wick three. John Wick three. I'm I'm really excited i know i'm, I'm so really excited, excited dude i'm so pumped that's that's what that's this weekend thursday i'm going oh. yeah oh it's gonna be good spoiler steve is at it tonight after all that shit he talked he got advanced tickets to what fucking, a fucking john wick prick. yeah should have given them to somebody who is a supporter of john wick what uh i'd what have a... flown down to florida wherever the fuck he is <laughs> uh but anyways yeah um so that knocked out two of mine because seen it was on my list okay um you watched the first episode of Chernobyl. I did. Okay. We can discuss that. You watched the second one. I did. We'll hold off. We'll catch up this week. Um, yeah. Your thoughts. I think it is probably quote unquote scarier than 90% of horror because it's a real thing. It happened. Yeah. It's over. It's dramatized. I'm sure, you know, probably, I mean, who maybe, knows how maybe, much though right yeah, i mean it's 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 a truly horrific moment in history and to follow these characters through it and see the grotesque things that happened and the lies yes it's insane the denial I mean, and the pride that the people yeah. have, you know what i'm saying like it's you know chernobyl was a ussr nuclear power plant and fucking they are very prideful people yeah. And they don't want anyone. They don't want to believe that it's fucked. The ones who do hear it's fucked don't believe it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And you're in the first episodes, only like the first like t six hours, 12 hours. It's like yeah. right away, right when it happened. Yeah. That was a great choice, too, is the uh, the idea of choosing to just frame it through how many hours it's been. Yep. And that they was... continue that, by the way. OK. Yep. Um, I, I would say the thing that I love. <laughs> Maybe the most is just the the uh, the the feeling of tension that you feel throughout the entire episode. I know it's nuts, dude. <laughs> and it's insanity to know that almost every single character that you're watching in this in this first episode is probably going to be dead right. by the or, next yeah, one. Or yeah, horribly sick. Yes. I mean, the, they say that, and you know what's funny? I looked up a bunch of shit about Chernobyl, and apparently, like from the initial blast in the you know the first day or whatever the fuck yeah. it was only like 30 people are noted as dead but who's cooking those books first of all right. where do those stats come from who do we believe on that right and then who knows today there's prop there's consequences i'm sure right um and it's funny too because like you would think only like the stuff happening on the ground would be like the scary intense shit but the fucking like boardroom meetings are scary just because yes. it's like Holy fuck. These they're, they're, like because they're talking about crazy shit that is scary. Yeah. Like, well, and then there are people like every situation who are trying to be the voice of reason saying, hey, maybe we should leave. And there's always going to be there's arrogant people. They just happen to be in charge saying, yeah. no, everything's fine. Stick your head in the sand. We got this. Well, and it's interesting, too, because I really they really play up, um, especially in that scene. They play up. There's a certain character that like represents the state like the yes. You know, the, 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 the talk about it next week, because the next one is not as uh, 
uh, clearly the explosion happened so yeah. like that sort of shit is done but it doesn't lose its intensity just because right like the implications of right. what it would cause right. and the fear over you know what do we do with the people how many people are at risk you know like that sort of thing you know what's crazy is that given five years time this is going to be shown in schools could be yeah why wouldn't it be i and the crazy thing is is like it it's it's a weird sort of moment because I'm not, I really wonder how well this plays if you don't know anything about Chernobyl. Like you don't, like you've never heard of Chernobyl. That would be an interesting viewing experience because part of the reason why this is absolutely horrific is you see a moment where a man's just pushing his baby across in in a stroller and you're like, that kid's dead. That kid is fucked. You see them dancing in the, in the The fucking, oh my God, in the ash. And you're like, you're fucked. Like there's so many moments where it's just little things that are so tragic, but it, they require you knowing what happens. That's what's kind of brilliant about it, though, as you're watching it, because yeah. that's a pretty slick move as far as the creators yes. are concerned. Yes. Like that scene when they're all because you would like people want to watch like a burn it. You know what I'm saying? It's just interesting to people. Yeah. And you're just sitting there like you dumbasses. But at the time, nothing like this had ever happened. Also, we and have nothing. We believe the state. Right. It's exactly. nothing wrong with yeah, it. Yeah. It's super crazy to think about. But yeah, yeah it's they're knocking it out of the park with it, I think. I yep. think it's really good. But, uh, you know, it I looks better s- than Watchmen. <laughs> it does. It, it really is. I am really excited for Stellan Sar- Skarsgård. Dude. He's great. I know he is. He's great. I can t- I could tell. <laughs> I could tell just by the trailer. I was like, oh, this is going to be. It's like a role that's made for him. It looks fucking he's fantastic. He's always awesome. He, he the really main is. guy is the guy who was in the terror. He's good. Yep. He's always great. Yeah. He's also he also played uh, Moriarty in the Sherlock Holmes there you series go. with Robert Downey. Um, yeah, it's a really good series. Highly recommend it. I can't see this being like. Get, uh, uh, HBO's new Game of Thrones. No, it's only five episodes. Is it? Done. Okay, it's, yeah. it's just a mini series. Yep. I was like, I don't know how they're going to continue they this. <laughs> Eight seasons. They're like, People get... start bitching because they cut down the length of the seasons. That's an interesting idea, though. What if what if they made like mini series, like a new mini series every year, like their new thing? Sure. You know, if it's going to have the quality, like the quality is just it's astounding. And and like the 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 pacing and the way they get you on the edge of your seat in that first episode. And you you just know, like 15 minutes into it, you're like, holy shit, this is really fucking good. It's just really tragic. <sighs> it's, it's ridiculously tragic. But uh, yeah. So anything else that you watched or uh, no, um, I think sometime in the near future, we're going to start including other things other than movies. Oh, but uh, we'll save that for a future date. Okay. Well, I'm going to real quick say that I've watched the first two episodes of the third season of sneaky Pete. Okay. And it is still good. Okay. I'll leave it at that. All right. Uh, So last thing, and it's going to lead us into our topic for the week is Pokemon detective Pikachu. Uh, Yes. Pokemon. Yes. Pokemon. Poke that man. Or as South Park would say, Jimpokemon. Yep. That too. American have big penis. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Great episode. <laughs> it is. A, it was. A, it was a really good episode. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So what I mean, I I'm going to you know what? I'm just going to tell you, I was not that impressed with this. OK. I was expecting more from this. Really? Yes. You were expecting more from a movie I that had like a 60 here, something I, percent. That all that aside, okay. like the first time I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, this looks good. Oh. Like, I'm intrigued by this. OK, uh, I don't I'm not a huge Pokemon guy, but right. I played some of the games. I played Pokemon Snap for N64 too. Okay. Where right. You take the pictures of the Pokemon. Oh, my God. I never got that one. <laughs> I got some great grades on my pictures. I um, was uh, I, I side sidebar here, but I was so anti Pokemon at the time because my stance was Dragon Ball Z is the greatest anime that's ever lived. And, and Pokemon, and is, Pokemon this is this is this thing that's poisoning the youth and making people think that this is what anime is. And I was I, I took like a big hard stance. I was like, fuck you, Pokemon. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Standing uh, up for my principles. But uh, yeah, so I, I had like the original Game Boy games like Red and Blue or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that the Pokemon designs in this were pretty much what you would dream to put on the screen. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um, the human characters, however, are so terrible to me. Um, 
and and the 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 way that exposition is dealt out by this is just it's horrifically not bad it's, in my it's opinion. not good i'll i'll be a little bit of a counter i'll be a little bit of a uh uh a positive pete i okay. guess i'll but be a negative nancy ne- negative nancy yeah um but uh it's it's fine it's 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 fine it's not good it's fine the writing, you're right, is not good. I don't even know what the fuck they were like. I don't even know what's the, going on. The plot makes absolutely no sense when you think about it for more than five seconds. Right. Um, As uh, you're going through it. Yes. It like kind of like holds kind of together. Like, yeah. Parts. You're like, oh, it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, me too. Sure, whatever. Right. But uh, I mean, the, po- the Pokemon are great. The world is actually whimsical enough. And for somebody who's not the biggest fan of Pokemon like you, I played um, I played Pokemon Blue way back in the day. And uh Fun enough game, nice little RPG. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not the biggest fan, but the main kid was fine. He's not great. Uh, I don't intro- blame him. No. 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 And and the girl is fine. Um, it's it's really sort of problems with, like, the, the story. Um, but there are moments of whimsy. There are effective moments of action. Uh, I actually thought the music was pretty good. I thought the music fit the tone of the movie. I thought the world was whimsical and inviting enough that i'm like i could see a sequel in this so long as it's better yeah i want a better version of this correct but the world is the world is worth revisiting i would agree i i don't disagree with that i don't i don't think yeah that's what i liked about it i'm giving it a c minus okay it's not like a d right uh and I'm only, but I'm only giving it a C minus because of that, because right. there was like some neat stuff, but overall, like the, the fucking, the kid is just, and I, I, I we might want to wait for spoilers, but, okay. but I'm giving yeah. it a C minus. I, I'm giving it a C plus. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where had the whimsy and certain action sequences not been there and the music been as good. Um, I think it's probably, I think you're right. I think it's a C minus like d plus kind of movie well it's hard to not even like look at pikachu and just smile because he's a cute little bastard yes you know there's a lot of that going on in this that's something we should address too ryan reynolds is mostly good in this but some of his jokes fall flat yeah Uh, Uh, well it's funny too because the jokes were hitting like the first 40 minutes of this in the theater i was in and as the movie went i felt like you could feel it it tapering off it gets tiring right Correct. Which is the whole problem with like a Deadpool type character, which was my worry with this movie. Yeah. And he is a little Deadpoolish, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's a little he, smart ass. He gets he gets a little. Yes. Right. Yes. That's um, why they cast him. Spoilers. Spoilers. So uh, the kid is just it's so depressing. Like the he hate like his dad dies. Doesn't seem like he gives yeah, a rat's yeah, ass. Yep. He goes and he's like he's just pissed at his dad. Yep. I still haven't like his I'm not quite mad at his dad for exactly something like he didn't like he sent him away or something when his mom died or something like that. And then his dad wanted to take him when he was like four or something. And he didn't go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. And then so there's that. And then there's just, yeah, the overall melancholy of the main character. And I get it. You were trying to build his arc from that and bring it up. But yeah, it just didn't work for me. It wasn't a good intro. Like you want to get the person on that character's side right at the beginning. Like I I agree. You know what I mean? So that didn't work for me. I, uh. The, the exposition, it's like they're supposed to be detectives, but really all they're doing is going from place to place and being told by someone else yes. what's going on. Yes. Like either it's a either it's a like video that they watch or it's Bill Nighy. Right. Yes. Just coming out of nowhere. Or the girl or the girl. Or, yeah. Yes. And it's like, OK, well, do some detective work. Here. Yeah, it's it's it, it really is for a movie that has detective in the title. There's virtually no detective work. Well, they're det- I mean, they are like they're, they're getting clues they're, as they go, but you're right. They're not like doing something to well, they, they do don't it. they don't really put much together like everything's right. just exactly kind of, yeah yeah um but i mean like i said like it kind of goes back to like my whole point which was before this movie even came out which is 
you really should have done an Ash story. The story of the underdog who comes from the small city, wants to be the best, and he trains to be the best, and nothing is handed to him. That's a universal story. It's worth telling to kids. It's a good way to introduce, like, oh, he discovers a Pokemon when you discover a Pokemon. It felt like the Pokemon battle scene was in there because they felt like they just needed one. Yes. Like they like they're like they have a problem with that being Pokemon, but that's what Pokemon is, yes. I think. I mean, yes. I, you know, I, I don't absolutely. know that much about it and there's a part of me that watches that and i'm like okay so ryan reynolds pikachu can't doesn't know how to do the lightning stuff until the end but now he can feel he can fight mewtwo who's like the strongest pokemon and it's like pokemon god he was pokemon god yeah that was stupid too because if anybody had a mewtwo it's over right like, well, that's why there's only one of him. That's why they created okay. him. He's he's a man-made one. Sure. I mean, they did say it in the movie. Yeah, that's true. They had him in the lab and shit, but he's he's and by like, the way, he's did, like my favorite thing about the movie, by the way. Did you for an one second think that Bill Nighy wasn't the no. bad guy? No. <laughs> the second that you see him, you're like bad guy. Yeah. And all of this like, "Oh, why are you being a jerk, my son?" It's like misdirection i mean i guess for a kid they might not know right right well if you've never never seen bill nye you might be fooled (laughs) yeah i and his i'm not clear on the whole no his plan is horrible so hold on can we can i try to like work through this yeah try and try and try and piece this together (laughs) as i'm detective pikachu (laughs) detective Um, jackson i think he's crippled if i remember correctly And he, like, founded the city. Yeah. And, like, he's, like, kind of tricked everyone to thinking this is, like, a place where human and Pokemon can coexist and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But his intention was to make super Pokemon. And then fuse humans like there's going to be no humans. He's basically going to turn all of the humans into Pokemon. Yes. Why does he do that with everyone else? Why not just him? Why doesn't he just rule as Mewtwo? Right. That's the whole thing is like because he thinks he's being benevolent. He's like, oh, everybody would want to be a Pokemon. They can evolve. And I'm like, yeah, but I like my penis. And Pikachu doesn't have a penis. And yeah, and, well, there's and also, a lot of stupid Pokemon. And also, it's like, wouldn't why wouldn't you want to try and learn how to do like, oh my god, how how do Pokemon evolve on the spot? Maybe we should try and figure that out for humans so we can evolve to a, like a further state for ourselves. Why would you want to turn into something that can only say its name? Right. Like, there's so much wrong with his plan. It makes no sense yeah. whatsoever. Well, I mean, there's other problems, too. Like, I don't understand. Like, there's the big turtle creatures. Yeah. There's like and the neat scene. I guess that was my maybe the best action scene in the movie. I mean, the fight between Mewtwo and Pikachu well, was my, pretty good. But. My question, though, is like, what's the plan with those? I don't Do know. They what just the, stay there. They were just like, let's see how big we can get them. And well, that's like, the whole point. Couldn't that like destroy the earth. <laughs> I know. I was watching and I was like, oh, fuck. If there's like 50 of these things, we're all fucked. Right. Like, it became a Godzilla movie for yes. a second there. Yeah, well, and then there's... Uh, but that was also cool. But, the, yeah, so the main thing, though, is that the kid is in the city because his dad is... He's told his dad is dead. He doesn't yeah. give a fuck that his dad's dead, which is a problem. But but he shows up to the city, and he learns maybe his dad's alive. Yeah. And I'm still... What happened to, like, his dad's body? His dad's body went inside the Pikachu. See, the pro- the whole problem with this so the is body, like... It's not just like the spirit. You're right. It's the body. Because at the end of the movie... Everybody's body comes out of like the Pokemon. Even though it's supposed to be just their souls. But I think that they were like, oh, we're a kid's movie. And we can't, we can't have, have like lifeless lying yeah, everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Also, that never really answers the question of where does the Pokemon soul go? Does it just get... Squ- squished it's pretty down fucking terrible it's pretty terrible to the pokemon yeah it's a it's a horrible horrible thing to do um and he doesn't have a memory no which would have been convenient it, for the character to have his memory but it makes no sense because like it just it it makes like this this plot just falls apart so he's like he's like i'll take the father and i'll put him in the pokemon <laughs> And so go stupid. and and go and yeah, it's it's the it's dumbest a dumb movie. Um, but then he's like, go and get the sun. The sun can be say, say yeah. Why? Why? Why is the sun? Because this like, did you know that the sun was gonna be a detective? Like, wh- what? Like this makes 
it makes no sense. Like, what's special about the sun? Why did he want the sun? And then, like, also, he healed Pikachu in the future. One of my favorite scenes. Yeah, it was, pretty, it was one it was of my fun, favorite fun, scenes fun, in fun the movie. Bit. But, like, the whole, like, he healed Pikachu so he could heal Ryan Reynolds. Why didn't he heal right. Ryan Reynolds after the car crash? Yeah, I don't really understand a lot of what's going on. No, there is no understanding it. I, yeah. I, you got to catch them you. all, Jackson. Got to catch them all, even though that's not what this movie's about at all. No. That's why, like, I'm watching it and I'm like, Dude, you can we kinda, get the Catch Em All movie next? Like, can we, we get one of those? I, I, I want an Ash movie. I, I think it would be fun. And I, with Team I, Rocket and Meowth. Where was Meowth, by the way? That's my favorite character. Really? Yeah. Like the whole like Bronx He's accent. He's like the coming. bad guy. He's the I'm bad the guy. I'm the only one yeah. who can talk, and I talk like this. Yeah. Is some, I don't know. It's a, probably a fucking terrible Meowth. I haven't. It's funny that Meowth is like, nobody talks about Meowth. He's basically the other main Pokemon in the show, right? Yeah. He's like Team Rocket's little guy. Yep. It's sad that I'm, I'm revealing that I know more about Pokemon than I let on at the beginning. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, yeah. So, but, but, but yeah, yeah, I'd I like mean, to see that. Meowth is actually an interesting case because he's the only other Pokemon other than like Mewtwo. I mean, and that talks, that talks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, crucify me, Pokemon fans, if there are other ones that I don't know about. But uh, <laughs> as far as we know, as far as we know, that's all there is. So it's it's like, wait, what's what's up with Meowth? What happened there? Yeah. That's a story worth telling. Well, and there's not a Mewtwo. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's not like another Meowth shown in the movie. There's no. no Meowth. No. I don't know. Saving it for the sequel. I yeah. I, I don't want a sequel to this specific movie. But a Pokemon movie could be good. It could be fun. Yeah. I and I and honestly, I'm really shocked that that's where I'm at at this point. Okay. And that's a success for this movie, because before this movie I would have been like, fuck you and your stupid Pokemon movie. I don't want it. Sure. So I mean, that's all I've got on this. It, yeah, it, I was it was disappointed. It was nah, it was fine. I guess. Did you like the twist that Ryan Reynolds was like? Uh, I, I mean, that was so weird. People are gonna say this is a race thing, but I didn't buy him as the kid's dad for some reason. Like Ryan Reynolds does not speak dad really no exactly and he didn't like he still seems too young to me yes. and maybe that's my problem I th- I because think that's the voice the, i think that's the thing is that he seems too young because i mean clearly the kid like it's possible that like a, yeah. a biracial kid looks like justice smith or whatever yeah, the fuck if, his yeah, name is Ryan i don't Reynolds, fucking know like got it but, on in high school but yeah it was it, it didn't work for me, and, like I like the idea of it trying to be emotional. I feel like was was overshadowed by the fact that I just didn't buy it. Right. You know what I mean? So it didn't have its. Oh, last piece. I'm going to leave it off. I just remembered this, but <sighs> Mewtwo has one of like the worst writing lines, which is like humanity is evil, but you have shown me that they're not all bad. Oh, yeah. That was really, really bad. It was like a fucking Optimus Prime line. <laughs> We will be out there yeah. in the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Only he doesn't have uh, Peter Cullen's voice, so yeah. he doesn't even get the bonus points for his cheesy. Mewtwo was pretty cool, though. He was, uh, they looked great. They all looked great. Yeah. Like, that was the best part was why, like, even the scene when they, like, huff the purple shit, those, like, mm. monkey looking ones, and yeah. they, like, chase him through the building. Like, decent little action set piece, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's right. a fine movie. To take your kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. I've seen way worse kids movies. I just wish it's got a little bit of that, like, talking down to kids feel. Yeah. You know, like the good kids movies when you're an adult. They speak. Don't, yeah. They, yeah. They, they don't sp- feel like they're dumb. Like Iron Giant really holds up. Paddington. Lots, Paddington. Like those yeah, yeah. kind of movies. Yep. Like, yep. I this one just didn't. I don't know. But. But anyways, yeah, it made us it made us think. I mean, we could look at Pokemon as an anime movie, which it kind of technically is. But oh, we that's also, right. So you're rooting for it because it's an anime movie. I do hope it does well because I mean, Alita's borderline not going to make its budget back. Sure. So I want something. I want a success in the genre because I do not want to see this genre die. Okay. But we decided to take it a different way and say. You know, let's pitch some video game movies. We got a video game movie here. It's not horrendous. There's, there's, I, I hope that like the audio actually picks that up as what it is and not just like static sounds. It's going to pick it up. 
Just like it's going to pick up that vape hit there. If you want to vape, come on down to Vape City and and hang out with Jackson. Never been to Vape City. Vaping thoughts. We're in Madison, Alex. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so how do you want to do this? Uh, we're going to go with two each. Um, and then we both avoided Zelda because we figured the other person would take Zelda. Yeah. So we're going to kind of, we might tag team that one. Yeah. We'll see. So why don't you lead off with, uh, okay. with your... Uh, I'm going with Mega Man. Oh, oh, this so, would be good. So in my version of Mega Man, it's like a it's like a Cold War tale. Okay. okay. So so the story with Mega Man was that Doctor Willie and Doctor Light like were partners and they were scientists and whatever. And Doctor Willie kind of turned bad, and then uh, Doctor Light created Mega Man to fight the the enemies that Doctor Willie was responsible for creating. Correct. So in my version, they both went to like MIT. And they became like close friends in college, Dr. Willie and Dr. Light. So is this, this is kind of like set in like a non cartoony world. It's a little bit more realistic. Yeah, it's realistic. Okay. It's realistic. It's not a cartoon. Dark and gritty. Uh, no, Zack Snyder. No, no, it's going to be okay. And I know you're going to laugh at this because this sounds bad because the movie was pretty bad. Okay. But Speed Racer, the Wachowski sibling Speed Racer, like think that is an aesthetic for this. Okay. 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 So, so uh, Dr. Willie is a Russian by the way. Okay. And uh, Dr. Light is an American. Dr. Willie kind of had a hard upbringing. It's a little Magneto Professor X thing going yeah, on. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so they, they basically were friends and they kind of like, you know, after college, they created, they, they were buddies. Like, you know, they had their lab and they, you know, whatever. Yeah. But then they, they started to discuss how this research should be used. And that's where like the, the, uh, you know, the, the capitalism versus socialism or however the fuck you want to look at it, their morals get in the way and they disagree on the use of this research. Do you remember, uh, Jurassic world too? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> right. I'm just giving you shit. All right. That, it, it will be a lot better than this. already. Yes. So, so, uh, they get in a fight and, uh, Dr. Willie returns to Russia. He kind of realizes his dream while, you know, uh, Dr. Light is in uh, America, kind of, you know, just kind of trying to create a better place, right? Okay. So um, eventually, Dr. Willie, like, creates this, this, like, team of super soldiers. So instead of, like, they're just robots, you know? They're like robot cyborgs. So you have like the bosses in Mega Man, like the classic bosses, yeah. like Scissors, Scissor Man, Man yeah, yep, fucking, yep. you know, Fireman or yeah. whatever. So they're all in this. Like you're you're gonna that you're gonna build your Are movie we gonna around call this. Them those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fuck okay. It. Keeping the code names. Yeah. All for right. sure. Um, yeah. So so then, uh, Doctor Light at this point is teaching a class at MIT. But, you know, he's got one really good pupil in his class and he's not like a warrior. He's just like a smart, you know, kid who basically he, you know, offers himself up, you know, to fight these because this, how, at how this point is, there's terror going on. How, in Russia. how young are we talking for this kid? He's like a college age kid. OK, he's like, OK, yeah, he's no. You know what he is? You know what he is? Genius He's like child. a Ben Shapiro. He like graduated from high school at like 16 oh and he like God. went to MIT as like a Somebody, super young kid. Please, with Photoshop skills, put Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro in a Mega Man, a Mega Man outfit. <laughs> do it. Please. Yeah, please. do that. Yeah, for sure. You're yeah. number one fan if you do that. Yeah, so yeah. So now I'm just imagining <laughs> Ben Shapiro as Mega Man. So this script just go in the toilet. Yeah, I was out. gonna say we've ruined the movie. But no, but that that I mean from there you have like your, you know, your action scenes and there's issues that pop up, like people okay. are whatever. Sure. They're trying to take over the world. You know, I haven't decided if like something happened to Dr. Willie to really send him over the edge, or if he's like one of these like Zod like characters where it's just like to him what he's doing is morally just I like the idea that it's just it's see and it's because I'm I'm a little tired of like the whole like um I have my justifiable evil past okay. whatever you know yeah uh, I do love the idea of like no this is just the right fucking thing to do guys yeah. like what's wrong with you right. so but yeah that's Mega Man uh I'm thinking like cast as Mega Man you do. You know, like ben Shapiro. Uh, uh, no, no, you do uh, your boy, the little Spider-Man kid. He Tom plays Holland. Mega Tom, Tom Holland, Holland as Mega would Man. Make a fucking fantastic uh, Tom. Uh, he Tom, would make a <laughs> Tom Holland as Mega Man. I almost said Tom Holland would make a fantastic Tom Holland. <laughs> 
<laughs> he would make a fantastic Mega Man, though. He would. He so would. He's, so he can be Mega Man. Spot um, on. Mads Mikkelsen is Dr. Willie, the Russian. Ah. And uh, okay. Dr. Light is uh, is Russell Crowe. <laughs> of course you did. It's of my movie. You, of course you did. He yeah. might be in the next movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> Where they they introduce uh, zero? Yeah, right. No, actually, you know there are a lot of actors that could be. You know, you could do. Uh, well, you could do fucking. Like, think of some old actors. You could do like um, Ken Watanabe. Ken Watanabe's fine. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, what about uh, like um, Daniel Craig or or uh, mm. uh, the the black dude who everybody wants to be James Bond from The Dark Tower? Idris Elba. Idris Elba. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could go. You can go any age range, really. Uh, you can, you know, make them up. The doctors got- are. You just have to have a certain amount of regalness for the doctors. That's true. You know, that, but that's and about- you know what? To, no, to that point, I wouldn't go Russell Crowe because I feel like he'd be playing Jarrell kind of again. Yeah. Yeah, so I wouldn't want to go that route, but I think Mads is the bad one. Mads is, would be is interesting. Mads, any villain role is perfection. Well, and then you have like the cast of the robots, the evil robots, right? And that you do like that one video game movie uh, where the guy had to fight for his girlfriend. What the fuck's the name of that? Michael Sarah. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim like, versus the world. Stylistically, you kind of do it like that. Like you intro the fights like that. Okay, now you've see when you said. Okay, so we're going to talk about like these pitches and like what we would do to improve okay, them sure. and whatnot. Um, I like this story. The story is very kind of universal. <laughs> might be a little stock, but I mean, the game is a little bit stock. Well, you have to not... fit it in. You right. can't get too crazy with right. it. Right. Yeah, you can't change the story too much because otherwise you're fucking with the source material. And then we get to the whole problem with video game movies at well, large. Even this, though, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not a Mega Man lore, right. you know, master or anything. I feel like that's but pretty are, close. I feel like there are people that would like see this movie and be like, no. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, this is how I do it. Um, I yeah. agree. I agree with but, the whole pitch. The second that you said Scott Pilgrim versus the world, I was like, that's like that might be the proper tone. Right. Um, yeah, because and, and even visually, like that's actually closer okay. to Speed Racer. Like that's actually closer sure, to Speed right, Racer yeah. than than most movies. So actually, I really like that. I really yeah, like that. Yeah, it's not exactly a real world. You get Edgar not... Wright to direct this, and you've got a fucking hit on your hands. Sure, you could do that. You could get Taika Waititi to Taika direct it. Taika could knock it out of the fucking park, yeah. too. Uh, Ari Aster, I heard, is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that would be, yeah, that's my that's my Mega Man. Okay, okay. So um, I'm starting with um, my favorite video game of all time. Which is Final Fantasy VII. Okay. And is it seven that you're making, or are you making a Final Fantasy movie that's not seven? That's no, just I'm, Final no, Fantasy. Or I, is it no, seven? I'm not going to do The Spirits Within. That was a garbage movie. I think it's not bad. I like that movie. It's not I, Final Fantasy. It's That was the whole problem is everybody was walking in and they're like, Final Fantasy. How is this connected to any of the Final Fantasies? Let's check yeah, it's it out. Not, it's an alien movie. It's not yeah. Final Fantasy. Yeah. But uh, so, so. Final Fantasy VII follows the main character, Cloud Strife. Uh, he is an ex-soldier, and he joins a uh, a ragtag militia group as they take on the giant business that um, has kind of been fucking over the planet. Okay. Um, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I think it's probably one of the most affecting stories that I've seen in a video game. So what you do is you follow it. Basically, you almost follow it as it happens in the game. And this is not a singular movie. This this story this is can, a series. One game is being made into like a trilogy or something. Yes. So okay. basically you almost take this and do disc one because this was a four disc game for PlayStation, the original. OK. Um, and basically, so the first disc is um, and I'll, I'll tell you my uh, I'll tell you my cast. So I've got Ryan Gosling as Cloud. Uh, That's the blonde, spiky hair, spiky hair right? dude. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> yep. Ryan Gosling. Now, what is the look of the characters? Are you trying to make them more realistic or are they like, does well, he look like the, the game thrown on the screen? Like, does the, the thing is, is we're going to do basically realistic, but we're going to try to do something 
a little closer to the hair than is necessarily realistic. It's going to be basically the only stylistic thing in the in the game is or in this in the movie is slightly stylized hair. Not okay. crazy, not going you know feet out from their hair, but try and mimic it in a in a slightly heightened realistic way. So you tone down the game a bit. A bit. You turn because that down from 11 to maybe like 5 or 6. 6 or 7. Oh, because, okay. Yeah, because the thing is is like the game is actually quite gritty. The only the only thing that's actually kind of colorful and over the top is actually kind of like the hair. I mean, okay. the, the costumes, the big swords, the big swords, and, yeah, yeah right. the weapons are sure. for sure. But the um, weapons are staying in your movie. The weapons are staying in the movie. Okay. I mean, you can't not do that. It just, it's weapons, just, it right. just it just doesn't work. Um, and I guess in that regard, it's going to be probably a little closer to like Alita um, in, okay. in the way where you've got a world that, you know, there, people were just walking around with swords in that movie, you know? Yep. Um, so you're going to have something similar here. I think we might do something like maybe so the the company is like Mako. Uh, I believe that's what it's called or, or Shinra. Shinra Inc. is what it's called. Okay. And uh, maybe there was some sort of accident, so they've outlawed guns in some way. You know, sort of similar idea to get guns out of here, explain why, uh, you know, a dude is walking around with a giant sword. But Ryan Gosling joins this this ragtag group. He doesn't really give a shit about stuff. His high school, uh, not high school sweetheart, but like a girl who had a crush on him. And How old is he? He's, uh, I, I actually can't remember. I don't, I don't know if they actually have uh, an age for him. Okay. Uh, but he is, I don't know, he's probably early 20s. So Gosling might be a little old. Okay, so he might be a little old, but whatever, we can work with we, that. We can work with that. The so, aging. Yeah, we can. We totally could. Ah. Could fit with the uh, the whole yeah. Alita aesthetic. The aging, you can do the whole uh, Samuel L. Jackson thing to yep. him. Yeah. So Ryan Gosling is Cloud. Then we've got uh, Lily James will play uh, the sort of young florist uh, who comes and joins your party. She's your healer. Okay. Um, she they have a meet cute in the game. It's it's pretty good. Sounds like you're really going close to the just from your what yes. I'm imagining here. You are sticking to the like the game it, the, nerds the, are not going to be mad at you. No, this is this. In all honesty, I I feel like the story doesn't lose momentum until probably I don't know. Disc three or disc four sort of gets a little silly. Okay. Um, and there are some things that you could streamline. You can you can bring it down instead of four discs or four movies. You could bring it down to three and cut some things out. Um, but overall, the beginning, the first, what would be considered the first act of this trilogy is damn near flawless in my mind. Okay. Um, so yeah, Lily James is the girl. They kind of they fall in love a little bit. Uh, Idris Elba. Uh, there's a char- character named Barrett who's basically a Mr. T character, but he's got a gun arm. Uh, we're going to we're gonna update that character. You can't really have somebody running around going like, Cloud, what are you doing, you crazy cracker? Like, you can't, we just... I we, mean, if they ever make Gears of War, that's what I want Coltrane to be. All right, all right. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of... <laughs> oh, and uh, I, I think we'll have Scarlett Johansson play Tifa. Okay. She's kind of like his um, like high school sort of sweetheart character. Sure. And that's kind of like your main cast. And basically they go off and they try and stop the the company. But the company isn't the only villain in there. There's also Sephiroth, who is also an old soldier who basically wants to see everything sort of taken down. He's kind of an anarchist. And he's played by the villain in Avatar. Mm, no. Damn. He's... He is, and I have not, and maybe people who are fans of this can actually write in and tell me who should be cast for Sephiroth in a live action, because he's the character that everybody sees other than Cloud. He's the one with the long, flowing silver hair. Got it. Yep, I know who he is. Yeah, so I don't know how you do that in real life. That one needs to be toned down. Okay. You know what? Why does now it that I've need seen, to be? Now that I've seen Henry Cavill with a white wig, maybe Henry Cavill for Sephiroth. Oh, really? Yeah. That might be it. He could actually do it. He's got, he's, yeah. You know what? Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So forget about sending in those suggestions, people. I already came it's up already with the perfect cast. one. Yep. I have the best cast. The best words. <laughs> Anyways, what, uh, what's your next pitch? Uh, my next pitch, uh, and bear with me here, because I don't really understand the story of this game. Oh. 
it's two movies. Oh, okay. The first one is The Pale King, and the second one is Hollow Knight. So ah. Hollow Knight is a uh, pretty much a, a dark fantasy. Um, in this movie, I'm pitching this as like the the aesthetic of like a nightmare before Christmas, like stop motion animation. Okay. Is where I'm going with this. I like that, but I'm not, I'm not sold on that because, because in the, in the game, basically there was a, um, there was this God named the radiance, uh, who kind of represents like nature. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the pale King showed up and kind of took over and kind of put, put the radiance in a box, so to speak, and kind of made the people forget about the radiance because he built this grand city, all this different like industry was built and whatever. Mm -hmm. But over time, the radiance started to infect the, the bugs with, uh, in their dreams. Okay. And like, if they didn't give in to him, then he would basically create an infection that would swell on them and he'd, they'd turn mad and like attack you or whatever in the game. Right. So what the pale King did is, um, he's got, he's got these vessels. So him and I forget what the queen's name was or whatever. They have these children. They're called vessels. They're genderless children. And basically he took one of his genderless children and he locked the radiance within the child. Okay. Okay. He locked it away and that's how he kept it at bay. He like put a seal on this door. He locked the fucker in this, this big, this big egg father of the year. <clears throat> right. Um, but that didn't work. And the hollow Knight is what that character is. Okay. Okay. So the first movie is that entire setup of, of the world. And you know, you get the backstory. Who's the main character in that then? Just the knight. the knight. the knight is the main character. So it's a tragedy. Well, no, the hollow Knight. Oh, isn't okay. You. Okay. Okay. Hollow okay. Knight is, okay. is the, the okay. tra- but it is a tragedy. Yeah. Like, uh, spoilers for anyone who wants to play it but it's so fucking awesome when you fight him in the game like he's fighting you and then he'll stop and just start stabbing himself because he's like trying you know it's like it's supposed to be a tragedy that this right. guy is locked in this you know it's yeah. a pretty dark fucking story but it, but it's tough to make a movie because it's like metroid like the lore is handed to you by things you pick up and read throughout <laughs> the game there's no there's not a bunch of cut scenes and, okay you know, but uh, yeah, that's the first movie. And then the second movie um, is uh, is the night. That's when you're you're introduced to the night at the end of the first movie. And the second movie is him like exploring the world, taking out the different enemies that he needs to take out in order to get to the Hollow Knight and then defeat the Radiance eventually. OK, but here's where I'm here's where I'm waffling here. Is it more interesting, like actually having it be bugs and it's like a stop motion animation, really like out there deal. Or do you just make it humans and like the different types of bugs are like different races or something? Mm. I think if you make it live action, you really open yourself up to that's racist comments. That's probably true. So like, what is the vest? Like, what are the empty vessels? Like right. the genderless characters. Right. Like, but and it's got it's a it's funny because I was trying I really wanted to pick this one to pitch because the game is fucking amazing right and, and it's amazing walking through it like you know it's like I'm picking up little bits of lore here and there I'm still not sure I understand it fully mm -hmm. but I like the idea that like okay we're gonna make a video game movie and it's gonna be a dark fucked up tale and maybe if it is bugs it works better I don't know that see that's the worry for me is that if it's bugs then nobody gives a fuck. I don't know. I but think, you can make uh, bugs have characters, I suppose. There's been like a bug's, a bug's life. life. Yeah. Ants. Everybody remembers <laughs> ants. <laughs> Woody Allen and Sly Stallone. Uh, I, I'm an I'm an ant. I don't know. That was a terrible Woody Allen. That was Everybody a John Travolta. Yeah. I, I'm an ant. I, 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 Christopher Walken. I, I'm an <laughs> Yeah, anyways. But yeah, anyways. So, so yeah. So the, I... I think I'm leaning more towards stop motion animation, okay. but it, like I said, it's tough because there's a ton of lore in the game, um, but you'd have to kind of streamline the fuck out of it to just lose all that shit. And then like the, 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 the setup, I feel like, okay, so here's what I'm trying to avoid by making this two movies because mm -hmm. you can do the thing like at the beginning of Hellboy. 
where you just have like the little three minute narration. Right. This is the story of the pale King and the hollow Knight and whatever. But I kind of like the idea that like they're the whole first movie is them trying to come up with this way to the fight, this fucking thing. Right. And at the end, it's the tragic ending of like you like you get you don't get to know that character in the game at all. Mm -hmm. But in this movie, I think it should be like you're sad about that character being in that position. That's how it ends. Okay. Like him chained up in this fucking room, like being basically forced to by his father who, you know, is power hungry or whatever. Right. And created, I mean, he did create this wonderful society for these bugs. Like they're mindless before he got there. So you know? it, it sounds dark. It is. It sounds like it, it, it's like, it sounds like Ari Aster is a perfect pick for this. <laughs> Yeah, but who are the actors? I guess the actors don't matter because we've talked about it before. Animated act, animated cast. Yeah. Who gives a fuck, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're you're taking. So I, I want to say my director for the last one would probably be the the Russo brothers. If, oh, okay. If I, um, for your movie, it's interesting because on the last one you picked a live action director to maybe do something cartoon. Sure. For my next one, I'm going to take Travis Knight, who did uh, Kubo and the Tr Two Strings. Okay. And I'm going to take him and have him do a live action movie based on uh, Chrono Trigger. Oh, Jesus. I haven't seen this game in 20 years. It's one of my favorite time travel so things. You're, you're going big time you're going hard on the rpg i think rpgs inherently tend to have some of the best stories yeah well they've got cutscenes and they've got interesting like yeah you're right it's all about the characters yeah yeah well sure. because an rpg i mean sure your battle mechanics maybe they don't aren't the greatest but if your story is broken nobody's well, going to continue they're all playing. story essentially right yes yeah they're I mean, all story yeah yeah so I love the idea of 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 taking this guy, this Kubo, who did the Kubo and the Two Strings, um, which is one of my favorite sort of fantasy epics of the last five years. Haven't seen it. It's it's great. I, I hear mean, it's amazing. You'll really like it. Yeah. It's it's uh uh what's his name? Um, Jeremy Johns on YouTube. He actually equated it to like the closest thing we've gotten to a uh, Zelda movie. Um, okay, that and I think that's, my interest, and I think that was a pretty fair assessment um, as far as themes and sort of like journey. Um, but yeah, I would love to see this guy take on Chrono's tale, um, going through time, meeting uh, you know Marlene and and um, and Frog. What is the plot of Chrono Trigger again? So basically, you play as like it's kind of like a Link type character. He doesn't speak in the, in the movie or in the game. Uh, but uh, Chrono, he's he's a he's a kid. He accidentally goes back in time with he and his best friend and uh, the princess of the time that he's living in. They go back in time, uh, and basically time hijinks ensue. You find out certain characters are from sometimes, and you thought they were from another time. Um, and basically, it's sort of like fixing the thing that happens that sort of ruins your planet forever okay so, so i guess it's end game it's end game so it's stopping the snap yes um it's another one where this this kind of has to be a trilogy there's no way you could possibly do it justice in one single movie okay um i don't even but know that's the what they would do yeah that's what's annoying yeah you know what i mean like well and I, I i thought for a little bit i was like well you could just have travis knight do um you know, this this story in stop motion, and that would almost be fitting to do a movie about time travel in stop motion. But then I thought, but you're so close to a cartoon anyways, especially with the cutscenes in this, um, which are animated by the Dragon Ball Z guy. Sure. Um, that it's like, well, why not? Like, part of the fun is seeing this in live action and see how you can adapt it into live action. So I want to see it done in live action. By the way, you just meant, sorry, I'm re -direct, I'm giving my Hollow Knight movie to a different director, hmm. giving it to Peter Jackson. Okay. That's who I'm giving it to. He's got the fantasy thing down. He's got it. He's dabbled in some horror in this past. Is it still going to be animated? Yes. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. I like it even better. Right. That, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. 
Um, but yeah, Ooh. but yeah, I love Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger also. That's another thing too. Is like Chrono Trigger has some of like the best video game music. I probably need to play that. I haven't. I played it. I didn't play through it. Okay, it's actually not a hard game because it's one of those old RPGs where you can just level up and just waste you, everything. You waste everything so long as you just grind, you know, for a little while. Fuck! I've got a third move. I've got a third idea. Okay, that just came to me. But we can wait till you're done with Chrono. No, Trigger. I, I'm done with Chrono Trigger. It's pretty. It's pretty basic. It should be treated like, like a fairy tale. It should be treated like a fairy tale. Have like a tone of like a fairy fairy tale, like Kubo and the Two Strings. There you go. Very earnest. Not like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. This is stupid. Like just embrace it. Like it's a fantasy. Makes sense. Have you ever played Act Razor? No. So in Act Razor, you're God basically. Okay. And you're their demons have infested the land. Okay. And there's two parts of the game. So there's the there's the uh the side scrolling action levels mm-hmm. and then between those you have to rebuild the city and you fly around as like this little a- angel. Really? And like yes. It's a masterpiece. Okay. Masterpiece. What was this for? Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Yes, and it's amazing. Damn. It's like, and the music is what got me when you said the music. Yeah. Because this movie, this game, just fucking great music. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, you, you make that a movie. But your main character, like, you don't, because you're, you're God in the game, but you're playing as the characters. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Like, okay. Like, your so command, you- like, when the, when the angel goes, like, he comes to you and says, like, we need to do this. We need to do that. And then you, like, send the angel around to, like, do the things. Right. Okay. You know? Like, so there will be, like, monster lairs. And the angel flies over it. And if you build the road of the city to the, to the monster's lair, then the people actually go around and, like, attack. If okay. you don't do it, the monsters will, like, fly into town and take them and light so, their buildings on fire and shit. So in this In the movie... movie do you show God? No, I don't think you do. Really? No, I think God has to be like a thing of faith where he doesn't really talk. He's just like you show like the like the the townspeople praying to God and you show the angel flying around. You probably don't even have the angel speak. You just like see, see I, I think you can go both ways. You think God should be a character. I think it would be an interesting idea to see a movie from God's perspective. That's kind of neat. That's true. I think that would be. That's true. That would be pretty interesting. So either way, it's fine, though. I kind of like that, though. I kind of like that, what you just said, because that is true. Like, you you never really see that unless it's like a jokey bullshit movie. Yeah, it's a Christian movie about like. Right. Actually, no, you never see that or in Bruce Christian movies. Bruce Almighty or something. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'd like to see them make that a fucking movie. But so, um, are we going to pitch Zelda? Or are we going to save that for another time? What time do we have on the on the list here? What's on? What, what are we at? One twenty. One twenty eight. I say we teased it. I say we save it for oh, another time. You're going to do that we're, to the people. We're going to put it in the bank. I'm sure they've just been waiting on bated breath for the yeah, Zelda. Yeah, pitch. we really we really knocked those pitches out of the park, didn't we? I thought they were okay. They they were all right. Yeah. They were all right. I'm ready for Mega Man, and I'm ready for uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, yeah. I, in all honesty, I would take every single one of the movies that we just pitched <laughs> over they, uh, over like what? Oh, Rampage. Over v- Rampage any day. I mean, yeah. I, that's the thing that doesn't like. I don't get how is, how creatively bankrupt Rampage well, is. Well, like, why are we choosing that for? A movie. Well, and if you were going to make it, why the fuck do you make that movie? I, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I just, there's a good rampage movie to be made. There could you but could I, make a decent one. I just don't understand. Like, why are they? Why are they choosing the games that have essentially no story That's and then true. building like a shitty story around them? That's, That's true. So dumb. You're right. Pick a pick a game with a story. I just don't. I don't get. Like, like even Pokemon is really about like nothing. Yeah, it's like. Get the, you thing, go get the thing and go get the thing and gotta go get all the things yeah you're right so you're right but they still made it like a, a world you know yeah they did a good job i thought but oh god that's zelda Ooh, we do that just we should just do an episode on that well we'll um, cover the other that. thing too is i'm gonna reach out to our our, our kennedy boy who, who's making the princess in another castle movie Baruch. and see where yeah. that's at yeah okay yeah, so cool. I'll get an update on that too. So yeah, that's uh that's it. That's it. John Wick three. 
It's coming. It's coming. And so is Jackson. I, whew. Right after the movie. <laughs> During. In the theater. <laughs>